Yo, million dollar question. Who okay. you hiring to shoot your wedding? Um, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Very We're gonna save that. Send in your resumes. Info Irvin Irvin said this is the most legible bachelor right now. <laughs> Prince dropped the contact <laughs> number. Balls and a kid. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Wedding Season, the podcast brought to you by Eminence Entertainment. Today's episode, we have guest and international photographer, Irvin Siddu. Irvin, welcome. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. And yes, this guy deserves a round of applause. <laughs> oh, no, thank you, and thank uh, you. we have some of the, the familiar faces that you guys know. MC Vic. DJ Sook. MC Pavin Sunday. All right. So now we're going to shoot and start with Irvin. Irvin. Give us a little bit of background on yourself. How long have you been in the game? Okay. Um, well, I, as you know, introduce me as a uh, wedding photographer. I've been in the game for probably like around 11, 12 years now. Okay. It's quite a long time. Yeah. Right? I feel like an uncle in the game almost. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, he's for not an uncle. Actually, yeah, yeah, I'm not an Ladies, uncle. he's single. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did Vyakro on our way, so it's towards the end. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I know. How do you back in the garage? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, wedding photographer, I travel around the, around the world, won a lot of awards, right? And that's pretty much the gist of things I would say. Okay, so what year did you start in? Do you remember? I don't know, a long time ago, but it was when I was like around 17 or so, 18. Okay. There. Yeah, yeah. And where did this passion of photography come from? Like, was it something you always wanted to do? Something that happened by accident? Like, where did that come from? I don't know. I think I always was a creative person in general. Okay. And what happened is I went to India when I was younger, around like grade six, went to City Hemkun Saib, and my sister had a camera and she would not share it with me. Right, and out like everywhere you see is like you see waterfalls, you see mountains, it's the craziest like landscape ever. And I think at that point I realized like yo, know, I actually really enjoy this, yeah. like just taking photos. And when I was in high school, I'm like, how do I make uh, this into a kind of career? And it kind of worked out. Very nice. So from when you started, which was you know like you said maybe 10, 11 years ago, in comparison to what the industry is today, I know that obviously competition and stuff like that has grown. Um, you know the the people that like to copy ideas has grown as well. But what what has really changed from when you started and how it was compared to now? I think everything has gotten a lot bigger. Um, weddings back in the day were like, hey, we're getting married at Vaz now. Now now it is just like, oh, like I want the biggest wedding. I want to show this person. Yeah. Well, that person did this. I want to do a little bit better, right? Yeah. Kind of like that. A competition in the end of the day, right? As that as it sounds. It gets it gets uh, very, very overwhelming, I think. This is what we talk about. Like, sometimes we're saying, like, you know how family members always want to outdo each other? Like, it's just, it's one person trying to do better than the other. Yeah. And, and, and we just never know, like, you know, why? Like, why? like for what? Okay, so the ultimate point comes back to what we're talking about in our MC podcast. You guys were listening to that. It's the bride and groom's day. It's exactly. Just let them have it. Yeah. I think so. it's Indian culture in general, right? Back home used to be the bigger goatee. Here, it's who has the bigger wedding, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and to touch on his point, don't be shy to drop any names of any copycats in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, like Vic and I don't hold back. I, <laughs> I know Irvin's a very, uh, very humble guy. Um, I've known Irvin for a while. I've also been in the wedding industry for a while, and I think you could argue he's been one of the photographers that helped shape like what we see now as photography. What the like the brides want, and like that kind of like trendsetter. Like, it's a, it's a trendsetter, and trendsetter. it's almost like that like. Every, like you said, it's always bigger and better. Yeah. So for photography, I'd argue that it's like they want new, different, right? And if you different. don't keep changing the game, um, like that's where people start falling behind, right? Like the yeah. same formula is not going to keep working year over year, right? It's, so. not, it's minor things. Like I don't know anything about photography, but I know you did something with, this is Navi Sidhu's picture. I know that one went all yeah. over the place and I think everyone wanted that. So yes. speak a little bit on that point. I know you changed something and I noticed it. Yeah. I don't know, what, right? That picture was beautiful. Yeah. And I, that was going all over the place. So speak on that. I just noticed, like, aside from weddings, like the trend of like just IG aesthetics, right, um, was going through like a film style type thing and like just like flash. I'm like, let me just implement this. And most most time, people are just kind of scared of just like trying new things because they think, oh, this thing works. Let me just make clients happy. But I've gotten to a point where like I could do whatever style I want, do I kind of pick and choose. And my clients are very confident in me to produce those kind of results. So um, with Navi, I kind of just try something new, like the flash kind of film style setup. And it ended up working out. And throughout the whole season, kind of did that. And then now, like, tons of content, which we're posting. And then you kind of see the whole, not the whole industry, but, like, a lot of indie people shift into that style. And a lot of people actually requesting it to their own wedding photographers. Source to my own close friends, right? <laughs> They're getting, like, my, my photos sent as their inspo, right? Um, so it's kind of cool. But, yeah. 
Every time Urban posts a new star, my wife wants to get married again. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you know, you know what it is. It's it's that thing of of being that the leader in in creativity, yeah. and I think that's something that Eminence had that you know we've had that as well, where people will try to mimic or copy ideas by sending our product to a, to a different company and saying, hey, like I want this, and they know they're booking somebody cheaper, yeah. and it might not be because they're cheaper. It might be because they're already booked. Because obviously, you know, some of like the, the people in the wedding industry that are doing well get booked years uh, maybe sometimes a couple years in advance right yeah. especially for the busier long weekend and stuff so i mean it's a good thing it's a it's a compliment in, in no, itself yeah great thing and yeah then, you know, um, like, sorry, correct? no no go for, yeah, go yeah. for it go for it good thing is like people copy that's cool i really don't care because it's competition in a day and like we don't really care about competition because like we're always on our own level mm -hmm. right um whenever you're setting trends we're always two steps ahead of everyone else right so we don't worry about the people copy because at the end of the day if you focus on yourself i feel like that's how you get further right 100 that's yeah. that, that's the biggest thing that we've noticed yeah. as well siri played levels <laughs> 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 i was just thinking about that <laughs> um, you know what, what's funny is is just speaking on uh urban's creativity we were in uh punta cana for uh a wedding uh reception and wedding i guess the whole wedding was there um so when we were there he took a photo of me on on his camera and i think he edited it within 30 seconds and sent it to my phone and like i was like holy shit like what did you do to this thing i was like yo like i want to know what you did so i can do this next time did you make him lose 30 pounds in <laughs> honestly i looked i, I looked looks, like i was about 50 pounds lighter so i loved it he looks a bit too jacked and i was jealous i was gonna force on my face on him <laughs> yo, yo, Irvin, Irvin. do i look jacked <laughs> <laughs> But um, so Irvin, what about the wedding industry as you know the good and the bad? Like, how, how do you feel? Like, what are what are some of the positive things that you see in the wedding industry that maybe help motivate you, or or you see that are good for the community or or the industry itself? And then I also want to know about some of the bad. Okay, um, we'll start with the good, obviously, right? Um, the good is like people you're around very happy people. Yep. So majority of the time, like eighty and ninety percent of the time, ninety five percent of the time, um, everyone's like very happy in there happy vibes and so you get to be around those people so it actually uplifts your energy as well yep. right so it's a positive work environment yes um and people are getting married obviously a plus for society i think right oh, well, it's a plus for your bank account buddy it's a plus for your bank account. marriage is good i am happy yeah yeah um how about how about this i'll ask you something else Irvin. i know a lot of people who are not photogenic, right? Okay. Couples, for example. I know, I mean, I could be wrong when I say this. I know females are usually comfortable where the groom sides are awkward doing poses. So how do you create that comfort zone for them to make, make it a good experience and make the pictures come out nicer? That's actually a very easy question. I think it's like, answer, sorry. Um, a lot of times people are in their heads when taking photos, right? It's not a normal thing to do where people kind of pose up like a GQ model, like, hey, do this, do that, like this way. Um, so what I personally do is I make them feel super comfortable, like like become boys with them, become homies. Like so when you're shooting with me, you're shooting with kind of a friend, not just a random uncle or a photographer. Shout out to you know, uncles in the industry. Uh, <laughs> right? Um, Drop some names. Drop you, some names. Uh, afterwards, no, I'm kidding. Um, so you can like relate to me, right? And on top of that, like all the photos you see on Instagram are all posed up. People think it's natural and candid. It's all posed up. So I've gotten really good at a process over time, like over 12 years, right? That I can tell you do certain things xyz and i'll make these pose up photos look very candid right so if you're not good at posing you have nothing to worry about right worst case scenario we'll get you two shots and you're good to go right <laughs> guys yeah. i can vouch for this Irvin did my you shoot i felt like salman khan <laughs> you went viral man and, dude, yeah, I was a and i guess another thing that is beneficial is that you being around that age group and people getting married in our later 20s and early 30s and creating that comfort level when Right, but I but I feel like he's been doing it for so long, even when he was way younger than the people getting married. Too. And I think it, I think, it comes yeah. with the confidence, like we were talking about on the other podcasts, yeah. your inner confidence to know that you're good at something, and then to make those people believe that you're good at it, right? And I feel like it's that a, that creates that connection. And everybody knows this. it's like a trust thing too, right? Like yeah, somebody can't book you, and then like everything you suggest kind of go against it, right? Like hey, I you know you should post like that. Like Irvin had me on a wall that like. Honestly, my legs were shaking. <laughs> right? I swear to God, my legs were shaking. He's like, trust me, if you're comfortable doing this, the shot will be epic. And yeah. it was epic. Like, maybe we can throw it in. But like, again, I was scared. Yeah. But yeah. I listened to him. He's like, you know can, what? It'll be a really we, nice can show. Can we do that little watermelon opening, the TikTok thing? <laughs> <laughs> so, Robbie Kira, do your thing. Make some cuff live from right here. The watermelon open. He's like, right here. Do your thing, man. Nope. So, on that note, um, Irvin, we want to know a couple things. Number one, what are three... Just three tips that you would recommend to have a great e-shoot and, you know, like, 
you don't have to give away all your secrets. But <laughs> what, are, what are some things that make an e-shoot better? Three things. Name okay. me three things that make an e-shoot or better. Or generally photos for a wedding. Oh, yeah, or generally. No, yeah. no, that's okay. We're not scared here. Whoa, I like the There's a heat. There <laughs> we'll put out educational content, right? For everyone else in the industry. Uh, no stress. <laughs> so I think in issue wise, it comes with a lot of factors. Now, one thing is location. One thing is your outfits, the couple itself, and the vibe and theme. So you got to think about all four of those things, right? Um, so do something that's special to you guys, right? Because the thing is like, why would you want to be doing something super serious if you guys are like a smiley, laughy couple? I mean, it just makes no sense, right? Yeah. So location really matters. Natural. Outfits matters. If you guys don't know anything about outfits or like you're not like a established couple, Go to Pinterest. Pinterest is amazing. Instagram is amazing, right? Yeah. Um, Location-wise, your photographer can recommend some. If you want something very unique, you might have to travel somewhere, yeah. right? Um, and then just trust the photographer. Just kind of tell him you're somewhat of your vision and he'll guide you in the right direction, I would say. I feel like that's that's huge because you got to know how to mesh all those things that you set together because without without one of them in place, like I feel like the balance is off, right? Yeah. So that's, that's huge. And the beauty is like, for me, like whenever, like everyone's unique, right? So if you can pull up in your outfit and go to this location and then, um, another person can come in that same location and different outfits and or same outfit and but their persona is a lot different and yeah. for me it's like a, it's like a not a challenge but it's like it's kind of cool because I get to mesh their personalities with that outfit and that vibe every single time vibe, so each yeah, new shoot cool. is like a a new creative project for me rather than the same typical stuff right? okay and now uh, you know what this is a question for the table you've gotten married you have never gotten married and probably never will. <laughs> um, and and I'm, I'm hoping you're eventually going to get I'm married. I'm somewhere in the middle of this too. Right? <laughs> and, you, and, you've, and you've shot so many weddings. And yeah. the reason I don't want to ask you this question directly okay. is because I want to know what do you guys think a client should look for when they're looking to book a wedding photographer? You probably should have Irvin <laughs> So you should have added if Irvin said this book. <laughs> <laughs> if Irvin said this book. Um... Honestly, like speaking from perspective of someone who did get married, yep. um, it's like what Irvin said earlier, but I think it's kind of like Instagram is big, mm -hmm. right? Like you should get a general idea of like, you know, what the person's, person's style, style is like. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, like and I always say this is like Irvin said earlier, weddings are getting bigger and bigger and more kind of complex. And I think people forget like, for example, every picture in your whatever thousands of pictures you get from a wedding are not going to be posed and like you know, say edited to that extent. Yeah. Um, but I think you should be looking at like, I'm sure even on your website, you have galleries, like general galleries. Yeah. Right. Um, or meet with your photographer and, yeah. and, you know, see their work. But generally speaking, I think the vibe is the key thing. Like when we did our issue, we did our wedding. We were comfortable with Irvin. He made our whole family comfortable. And like, the one thing I like about him is he's like to the point. There's no, you know, fluffing up. Uh, like early, like in an earlier episode, Pavan said, like the mama, this, that, like it's not like that. It's listen, I need to get these shots. Yeah. These are the important shots. Yep. And we did get all the sh important shots that we wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and the other ones, if you get them, you get them. If you don't, you don't, right? But I really think you need to connect like with the photographer mm -hmm. um, and kind of figure out once you've seen their style on Instagram, yeah. is am I kind of compatible with them? Yeah. And two is like, is this the kind of vision I'm going for? If you want to, if you're more worried about the, the mom man and everybody getting a picture, then, you know, maybe a guy like Irvin might not be the best. Like, he could still do it, but, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, his his craft is very different. Yeah, right? we're like so, someone that get to the point, like, hey, listen, this is what I need. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like you're good at conveying that to your clients at the beginning. Like, hey, guys, like, this is how it's going down. Like, I need you to be on the same page. Yeah. Um, to be honest, like, request-wise, I get everything. If the yeah. mom may want their photos or their photos, yeah. um, if, if, the, if the clients want their own photos, I'll, beef with mine. I'll get it. <laughs> right? The thing is, like, you got to understand what everyone wants. And when you're delivering a gallery, it's not just for the bride and groom. It's for the parents, for the siblings, for the grandparents, yep. for the cousins. So you got to make everyone happy. Yep. So you're not making one, two people happy. You're making over 100 people happy, right? Well, so when you look at your gallery, um, you want to make sure that Chachi has her photo and it looks good, right? <laughs> yeah. Because she can tell all her winner's friends, right? Oh, my you see business referrals gone up, right? <laughs> and I think that's the difference between, uh, you know, like uh, the the MC saying, you know, the entrances at a, at yeah, a, it's, a wedding. It's very right? different, there, yeah, it's there's a There's a huge difference there because there, these people are unnecessary to that process. Whereas during the entirety of the wedding, everybody wants a good picture. You want to incorporate everybody. I think this goes for video and photo. You want to make sure you have everybody in it. Right. And I th and I think this is why we have this podcast, right? I mean, at the, at the same time, Irvin, we work with you for years. Yeah. But it's like, we don't really fully understand photography, right? And yeah. if we don't fully understand it, I'd assume people watching at home really don't, don't understand how, how in-depth it is, right? Yeah. So it's like, Especially for some people doing their first wedding. Yeah, 100%. So mm -hmm. it's like, I could think, you know, the mama's picture is not important. But like you said, it is, right? yeah. and 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 that's an interesting thing to know, right? Yeah. So somebody throw in, um, 
that we don't know anything about photography to yeah. the level that you do. But something personally I've noticed when yes. I show up to a very small snippet of how long you've been working with the couple at the reception, right? Yeah. When you're doing your pre, uh, pre-reception pre pictures and stuff like that. Something I've noticed is that's special about you is that couples seem comfortable to let you do your thing. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, bro. I right? don't mind that he thinks you're special. Yeah. <laughs> but, I don't think he means it like that. It's very no, sweet. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, it's very comfortable for yeah. like for me to see like some photographers, their couples aren't comfortable to like let them just do their thing. Yeah. And we'll touch up based on this later on too because we were talking about it from a DJ and MC perspective as well. It doesn't always work so well when um, couples like tell the photographer what to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like with you, with, like the small time that I get to see it, yeah. um, you're usually the one that's able to command like, you know, like, hey, this is what I need and this is what I want to do. And couples are very comfortable with that, right? Um, Because they're not worried about the the outcome because of what you've already put out into the world. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And one thing is like, for you guys as well, you guys are so good at what you do. Is that it's, it's like an ease of things, right? You're not stressed out. Like back in the day, I've seen shooters like kind of stressed out, like they're shaking, whatever, right? Even me when I shot my first few weddings, I was like, I wasn't as confident as I was. Nowadays, it's like, this is so easy. Like I think making it, Taking photos is easier than making eggs, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's a level that I'm at. So when I'm doing the pre-reception shoot, it's so easy. And that confidence kind of shows towards the client and they yeah. respect that. And the same thing with DJing-wise, right? Yep. Clients understand that. Like, yo, we're going to let you do what you want to do, right? Because we trust that you can kill a dance floor. Yeah. And those are always the best clients. Actually, yeah. you mentioned confidence. And Irvin, I have a question for you. I, I know you did this once upon a time. I haven't, like, I, I've got married a long time ago. But yeah. do you still shoot by yourself? Yeah, 100%. So, like, Irvin, like, again, I don't know if anyone really knows about him, but very unique. Like, a lot of photographers shoot in pairs, whatever it is. Yeah, some and people shoot with five photographers. Yeah. Still don't get it yeah. right. <laughs> and he shoots by himself. And, like, I'll be completely honest with you. Like, um, this is my stamp of approval. But, like, <laughs> when we were getting married, he said, you know what? I'm going to shoot your ceremony by myself. And don't get me wrong. We were a little bit hesitant, right? Like, again, I was just pretty new to the industry at the time. So, yeah. uh, we weren't familiar with photography. Um, but he nailed it. Like, he didn't miss a single moment. And it was he wasn't bumping into anyone or like no one was getting in his way. And he literally like if you were to look at our pictures, he got every special moment. Um, and like you know, my wife just me, she had like very specific like I want to make sure we get this like yeah. a nice shot for this. He nailed all of them, right? So it's very interesting because like again, I used to always think it was two, and then I met Irvin. You know, I, I, you, know I, you know it's game I, time I when he throws that, that when he throws that sling on, and then he's got yeah. one, he's got one the, camera over here, and then wants to this thing, and then sometimes he just switches and throws it back. That's Spider Man, little bro. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, wow. the sling serious. It, it's no, it's cool. I, same thing. I I had him. Uh, I, I booked him for my cousin's wedding, single shooter by himself. And I think it it goes to show that with experience, you know what you're doing. You don't have to waste time with all the extra pictures. Sometimes I take his camera and start taking random pictures <laughs> to make him go through more pictures of work. <laughs> and I take like a hundred pictures for no reason. But it's just it goes to tell like experience makes a big big difference because when you get to that point where you can capture every moment, you know who everybody is. And you focus on that, right? When you focus on what you're supposed to do instead of all the unnecessary stuff, like there's still people that are taking pictures of the buffet. Like for what? <laughs> like there's butter chicken and naan at every single party. Like what are you videotaping that for? Like just it doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. So I, I think that goes with experience. Like it's it's a big change, right? Yeah. Irvin, let's get move on to one good. thing. Uh, I know Stux talked about his bad experience. Uh, we've had a whole MC on our, like, you know, a little bit of downs. Well, give us a horror story. Horror story, like, or just you know, like, yeah, yeah, horror what, story. what I've seen. Or no, 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 no. What, what, what is the worst experience that you've ever had with the client without saying the client's name, without mentioning anything specific? Yes. And tell us what happened and why. Cappy, no, yeah. I gotta think about if I say this in in public or not, right? Uh, don't worry, no, we'll edit no it names, out. no dates, no nothing. Yeah, nothing. I don't want to know what year. I just want to know what happened. And like the generic view of why it was a bad experience. But if you do want to give names, we will not. Say <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm just thinking. I, I can't. I can't think of any. No I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I'm just so good. They're, they're, I'm just so good. The only negative experience I have sometimes they get married again. So I, I, <laughs> I think like it's just like maybe some client expectations, right? Okay. So certain clients may not ex- expect up here, but then reality is that they're right there, kind of thing. Um, maybe like. Um, let's say you're in Brampton you're at Chinkuzi Park which is a great park you're at Clareville a lot of people go to Clareville right their expectations of that location might be the Vancouver Mountains in their head also like mm-hmm. X, Y, Z oh, okay, but then you. you're in Brampton and you can't expect that yeah. right like a lot of Vancouver photographers like they have like these cool backdrops 
look around where we are. We have like yeah, they're in York Mount- University. Like, yeah. what, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, right. So what are you really going to photograph is quite nice, right? Um, or even on like a rainy day, they're like, oh, we'll take us somewhere. I'm like, yo, there's nothing, right? Like, but yeah. You're basically saying it's like unrealistic expectations. It is, it's yeah. like a horror story, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, I guess in a way, like you have to kind of actually go to that location to get that location. You can't say, I'm going to pick something cheaper or more convenient, yeah. but then, you know, want something that's a kind of, like you said, like a five hour flight away. Yeah, exactly. It, just, it doesn't make sense. But yeah. At uh, Urban City Photography, we'll make Clearville Park look like Vancouver, BC. So <laughs> you know trust what? the process, guys. I'll post that tonight, maybe. It's tomorrow. <laughs> I think you touched on this before. Your favorite type of client. Oh, uh, I think it's easy. I think it comes to you guys as well. Someone who just like lets you do what they do, what you do. It's yep. so, like I've had clients who like I want X, Y, Z, and that's cool, right? Obviously, you, you're paying for something you can get what you want. Yeah. But like when you're like, oh, I need this pose. I don't like this pose. I don't like that pose. Then you kind of limit my creativity and how I flow with things. Um, so whenever a client is like, hey, we like your work. Do what you got to do. That's the best. That's do you, do your thing. It's like music to your ears, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I feel like micromanaging is what ruins everything. Yeah. Right? There's it's, like yeah. the natural flow of things. Like when you look, think about nature. So when you let things flow, it's just like works out to be create magic. But when you restrict the flow of things, what are you going to do with it, right? And I think I was going to ask another question. What's the best advice uh, for clients to to work with vendors? But I think it's the same advice, which is let them do what they're good at like you're paying yeah. trust, for trust them to trust, do their job exactly, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. because if you yeah. trust them to pay them you should trust them to do a good job at it right yeah. so i think it depends on uh, what level you get to and, and the vendors you're working with but i think it's typically yeah but do your research too because like the end of the day, like a lot like there's a lot of vendors in the industry and not all of them are the greatest right you might see like cool photos on instagram but like hey like if i take four thousand photos i'm pretty sure one's gonna turn out good <laughs> yeah. right yeah <laughs> that's the reality of instagram now so like a lot of times the clients will just book off Instagram and then they'll see their photos afterwards not talking about me but then they'll be like oh why doesn't it look like this? We, you show, show this, right? So it's very important to the full gallery. The full gallery is going to showcase what you can get at the end of the day and if you don't see that photo or video wise then you're kind of messy. I'm asked for three full galleries, right? Um, and then with that you could be like okay this is what I'm actually going to get. This is what it's going to look like rather than oh one photo on Instagram I'm going to paste mm-hmm. five videos. And see, right? yeah, right. so that's the advice. That's the advice that everybody needs to know, you know, yeah. to make sure you really do your in-depth research for that. No, for sure. And it mesh well as well. You got to vibe with the person 100%. too, right? 100%. I just saw uh, an article, I don't know if you guys saw it, that somebody hired a, <laughs> somebody hired a oh, photographer yeah, yeah. for 1500 bucks for the wedding. <laughs> And they got photos back and they're all blurry. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but this is what happens, right? So a lot of people, I think, we have went through this. Hey, man, they saved $4,500. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it, it goes to, that's what I was about to say. I mean, you get people that come and say, hey, you know what? Like, you're out of my budget. And I think at that point in time, you just say, you know what? Like, like I, I'm sorry. Like, you charge because you are at a certain point in your career, at a certain level in your career, right? Like, that's what you're charging yeah. for. So, like… Yeah. Sometimes if you're out of budget, it, it is what it is. Like, I, I, like you can't do anything about it. You can't, you know, you're not going to throw your price down because that takes your brand to that level as well, right? So why don't you touch on expectations financially when people come in? Like, wh- like what, it, what is a make or break for someone to book Irvin Sadu? Like, what do you mean make or break price-wise? Or? No, just in general. Like, what what are the things that you hear as, the, why did we come and choose Irvin Sadu? Um, I think previous referrals that have done a really good job. Okay. Um, things that do well that no one… I don't. I'm not, I can't say no one does, but I think I do really well. Is that over the last ten years, you think of photography as like, yo, let me get my shot. That's gotten so easy now. Where I think about other stuff, like when I'm shooting, I'm not. I'm sh- like, everything's happening here. I'm looking over here. Yeah. Because like photography is capturing emotions, right, and reactions whatsoever. Yeah. So most people will be like, hey, you're laughing now. Let me go capture that. That's not the case with me. I, I predict the reactions, right, rather than getting the reaction afterwards. So let's just say a prime example. I tell all my shooters is that the bride uh bride's mom sing a speech right it's a very emotional speech who's gonna cry the bride the bride ding, ding, ding. probably the dad the siblings <laughs> right so i'm not gonna be focusing on random people that are in the back yeah. my i'm literally staring at the pe- uh bride's sister yep right um the bride and all those people and i'm waiting for them to react rather than captain's reaction afterwards um other stuff like i fix small things man like i fix her shirvani fix hair small things you figure uh, like small details that no one else sees that I see now after years and years of coverage. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big difference for me too. I, I don't know if you guys have seen this as as DJ and MCs, but I've definitely seen it where I've been with the photography company who is probably brand new. I've never heard of them before and, and I've done that event with them, right? And what I saw them doing is 
they were capturing things that made no sense at that present time. The butter chicken? And and no, like, they're, 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 I, and I'm not I know you were there. So just they're, 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 they're taking a picture of, of the crowd, like you said, and these yeah. are random people at random tables. And there's actually a speech going on. It's an intimate speech. Guess who's giving the speech? The bride and groom. Imagine taking pictures of tables while the bride and groom are giving a speech. They're talking about their parents. You're not focusing on the parents. You're not focusing on the family or the siblings. But you're over there of, of like, I, I don't know, Uncle Joe or something in the corner. And, 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 and like, uh, no, we'll go back to Sequant Uncle. I yeah. know that name was mentioned. So. Sequant Uncle. Uncle Sequant, yes. <laughs> so, like, you know what I mean? Like, all of those things. I, I think that's, that, that's huge. But um, for new vendors, somebody that wants to get into photography, how do they do it? Um, as a, as an artist, I think a lot of people have egos, right? Um, so you might just pick up a camera and be like, "Oh, this is sick! I could shoot." Um, but you get paid directly to what you're worth and what like your product you kind of give out. So if you're not booking at least twenty weddings or let's say twenty minimum at a certain price point, you're charging at that day, you're charging too much. You're not worth it. So go work on your skill and your craft. Um, like practice more because the end of the day, reality is your work isn't as good, 100%. right? Um, and I thought that as well. And eventually, my price got higher and higher, and I could book those numbers, which is fine. But like when I, if you're not booking that that twenty weddings at that price point, you're not worth it, right? You're not good enough. So up your craft first. Yeah. Um. Even char- start with charging zero dollars. Get the get your portfolio up there, right? And then people book you. And that yeah, and I, I think that's a huge thing. Like we've talked about it. Like I said, I did my first gig for free. Yeah. Like it, it you is have what to. it is. I, yeah, like yeah. I had to, right? I had to learn. Somebody had to give me direction. So I would say even find a mentor. I did yeah. my first gig for free too. Prince took the money. And I think Irvin, <laughs> Irvin makes a good point. Is like uh, I think you saw this in the older kind of group like generation of vendors yeah. like are kind of the older uh, vendors but the paying your dues part right yeah. and i find a lot of people kind of coming into industry now are looking for like a free walk in the park yeah um and like you said right off the bat there's an ego right yeah um and sometimes i laugh because you know it's like it doesn't make sense we've been in the game for so long and yeah. no one has an ego mm-hmm. and yeah. this kid that started yesterday who no one knows exactly. walks up to you with like do you know who i am I'm like no yeah. sorry i don't <laughs> right i feel like it's like uh, excitement against them like they think all of a sudden like, like somebody compliments them and they're like in another like but place. it's like it's like you know it's like it's like we've all been in the game and like Irvin, myself it's like you know prince like, it's like we walk up to people we introduce ourselves yeah, yeah. right it doesn't matter you don't expect what, anyone to know who you are 100 no, percent. some some guys like a lot of the newer guys is just like hey do you know who i am right and yeah i think sometimes like not, not sometimes i actually think all the time that ego is actually killing their craft right 100%. it's because yeah, yeah. you already think you're the king of the hill and you haven't even started climbing the hill yeah. right yeah. so um I think like what Irvin says is like, you know, pay your dues, right? Earn your stripes. And then, you know, if you have an ego after, you have an ego after. It's yeah. fine. And right? the but one big thing that I, I really want to like, you know, point out is that like, you are a wedding industry vendor. A lot of people act like they're like celebrities. Like you're not Drake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're not Drake. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, 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 I, I, like insert that. Clip. Being confident, being confident, and and you know saying these things that that you know what you're doing and you're ahead of you know some of the creative moments that other people aren't able to capture. That is a whole different thing from walking into a room and acting like everybody needs to know who you are and you know there needs to be you know water at your in your hand immediately. Like. You, Dude, get it yourself. Like you're not, you're, you know, you're not that person, I and you, that. you're never gonna be at that level that you know you think you are because you are not a celebrity. Like you're not gonna walk into a banquet hall party and people are gonna start signing autographs. Like it's not <laughs> happening, right? Until you start signing autographs and there's a crowd of people crowding you with phones ready to record you, you are not a celebrity. And and that that's the one thing that ego that's killing people where they think, you know, like oh I'm this guy. Yeah. And I think the the older vendors that we're talking about, like people that have started from you know. 2017, 2015, 2014. Like these people know this and they know that we're not here to be a celebrity. We're here to be friends with the family yeah. and we're here to give them the best experience possible. And that's why they are where they are, right? Um, your million dollar question, who are you hiring to shoot your wedding? Um, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Very we're going to save that. Send in your resumes. Info <laughs> 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 Ir- Irvin, <laughs> Irvin Sidhu is the most legible bachelor right now. <laughs> <laughs> Prince dropped the contact. <laughs> Number balls in a kid. Okay, no, but we do, we do want to give everybody, yeah. you know, the, the information to make sure that if they want Irvin Sidhu at their wedding, how do they contact Irvin Sidhu? So let's give us some information. Yeah, so usually Prince does this. Usually yes. I do this, but I don't so have usually, it memorized. So he usually wraps it up. Okay. But uh, you're a special guest today, so let's have Shoot. you. Okay. Can we get a zoom in on Irvin Yeah, Sidhu? yeah, um, So the best way to contact me is probably two years in advance for your wedding, just to make sure I'm available. Um, the website is Um, 
Uh, email is Irvin at IrvinCitu.com as well. And just drop your dates in the email. Um, what you like about my work is very important for me. I need to make sure that we're a good match at the end of the day. And that's pretty much it. You heard how to book Irvin Sidhu. You have the contact information. Make sure you visit IrvinSidhu.com and Irvin at IrvinSidhu.com for emails. And you obviously know www.eminentcnt.com 647-449-7034. And we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.